at quarterback who looked great. I I was watching Sports Center after the game last night. I think it was Scott Van Pelt that said accurately, if you just look at the numbers, you would think Joe Burrow played. Like Jake mm-hmm. Browning had a solid, better than solid night leading the Bengals to that victory, making the most out of Jamar Chase, making big throws in big spots. Game plan used a lot more of Joe Mixon than we saw in the loss to the Steelers where Mixon just was a non-factor. Mixon was a big factor last night. And the Bengals shredded a defense that was becoming one of the best defenses in the NFL. They put up well over 400 yards against one of the best defenses in the NFL, which makes me wonder how good is that defense? Well, right. It it shows that there are a lot of flaws with all the AFC contenders, I think, Mike. And, you know, like you said, with Jake Browning, you would think that it was almost Joe Burrow out there statistically. But really, that was the best statistical game that a Cincinnati quarterback has had all season long. And, you know, of course, Joe Burrow had the calf going into the regular season and that affected things for sure. But, you know, then he had the wrist injury. Now he's out for the rest of the season. But I, I think that if the Bengals had gotten off to a better start and then Jake Browning had come in and he'd been playing more like this as opposed to the way he played against the Steelers where he really showed, he, he's got some stuff to him, you know, and the Bengals might be more of a contender than we think of them as right now. And it's just, I think that there are too many good teams in the AFC for them to really make a push into the postseason, but they're at least going to be entertaining to watch over the last five weeks of the year. It looks like. But they now enter this cluster of teams at six and six. There are a bunch of teams that are seven and five or six and six that are going to be competing for essentially all of the wild card spots. That's the thing. There's yes. three playoff spots up for grabs. In the NFC, it's kind of a wide open race for two. In the AFC, mm-hmm. it is fully wide open for three spots. And you've got the Steelers sinking now with Kenny Pickett yeah. out for two to four weeks, reportedly. The Browns is the Browns again. Two losses in a row. Disastrous road trip. Worst road trip for the franchise since they packed up and moved to Baltimore, frankly. The Colts are rising at 7-5, and five, but they're still the Colts without their starting quarterback. And then look at all those teams. You got seven teams in a game of musical chairs with three seats. And you know who's happy about all this? I mean, the Bengals are back in it, so they have to be happy about it. The Bills have got to be thrilled with what's oh, yeah. happened lately. Oh, when yeah. When you look well, at the Steelers, fun. down, Browns, down. There's an opening for the Bills to get in, and they could be very dangerous if they get in. I know they're supposed to be about, about the Bengals. I think the Bengals could be dangerous if they get in, and the Bills could be yeah. dangerous if they get in. See, I, I brought it back to Monday night by throwing the Bengals in there too. But some of those teams on the outside looking in, like if you're among the best teams in the AFC, you don't want them to make it. Well, right. I mean, right now, as we look at that graphic in the two that in the three teams that are in the wild card spots, none of them have their starting quarterback, right? So whether it's Kenny Pickett, whether it's Deshaun Watson, whether it's Anthony Richardson, right now it's Mitchell Trubisky, Joe Flacco, probably because Thompson Robinson is still in concussion protocol. And frankly, Joe Flacco looked leagues better than Thompson Robinson, except for that stupid interception he threw, but we don't necessarily need to talk about that. And then also Gardner Minshew, who is a bit of a roller coaster as a full-time starting quarterback. So yeah, the bills certainly advantage there, right? You know, you look at the Texans advantage there because their quarterback is playing great. So these are all things that if Jake Browning can continue to have his play at that level, yeah, the, the Bengals can make some noise. I just, there's a time where the clock strikes midnight on a on a backup quarterback as you have learned certainly with Josh Dobbs yes. right and that's kind of what I would think would be coming for the Bengals but for at least one night you know Jake Browning was great he was terrific he made every single throw he needed to make and the players around him helped him make those plays you know for the most part with the exception of Tyler Boyd throwing the interception but I I just thought that when Zach Taylor said, all right, let's really let this guy go, you know, let's let him make plays. We got to trust him and we got to say that our receivers are good enough that they're going to make plays like Jamar Chase did there where he's one on one. And that's exactly what you should do. That's what Joe Burrow would do. Throw it up to him. He's going to make a play more times than not. Um, that's the kind of thing you want out of your backup quarterback and, you know, makes plays with his legs, too. That was a big run right there. 
So I, I feel good about what Jake Browning did. I just, I don't know how sustainable it's going to be, Mike. Well, the reality is you get more film on what he's doing. You figure out how to make him rattled and jumpy. And there was a period late in the game where he seemed rattled and jumpy. A couple of false starts. He just seemed discombobulated. I love the close-up shots of quarterbacks during games because their demeanor and their facial expressions can tell you a lot. And there was a period where I thought this guy's just a game-changing interception waiting to happen, like one more snap and it's going to go. It just felt like he was reaching the limit of what he could do before the wheels came off. And I said well over 400 yards, 491, almost 500 yards of offense last night by the Cincinnati Bengals. They did everything they needed to do. Now, their defense wasn't great either to give up 31 points and to allow C.J. Beathard to come in late and force overtime. But the Bengals... The Bengals have to feel good about last night. And quarterback play is ultimately going to be the difference, I think. For those seven teams, the three that get in are going to be carried there by their quarterbacks. And that gives the Texans, the Bills, and for now the Broncos the edge. Because Russell Wilson's quietly been a great redemption story. And he's one of the very few quarterbacks this season who has yet to be injured. There's there's a small Mm -hmm. handful of guys who haven't had some injury issue. Knock on wood, man. 13 weeks. Well, and... And it's him and it's Tua and it's Lamar Jackson. Although Lamar Jackson got banged up in that Thursday night game a couple of weeks ago, he didn't miss any time. And it wasn't an injury problem that lingered into the next week. Mahomes was banged up a little bit earlier, though. He had a hand thing. He's been on the injury report. I'm talking about guys who have been clean all year. Clean all year. Yeah, clean all year. Tua, Lamar, kind of with a small asterisk, and, and Russell Wilson in the AFC. And so well, we'll see how it goes, but we got a five week sprint to the finish, seven teams vying for three spots and the best teams crossing their fingers and hoping the bills don't make it. The Texans don't make it. And the Bengals team we saw last night doesn't make it. If that Bengals team makes it, they're going to potentially give somebody trouble if they get to the wild card round and nobody expected it after Joe Burrow went out for the year. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.